<laughs> you ready? Is the camera level there, Rhett? Yo! Yeah, it's lined up with the top of the marshals. Okay. Okay. And if it's not, you Is can always line it back up in post. Okay. Okay, I'm going to say my name, and then you guys say your own names. Okay, right. ready? You go, for, you go second. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Rick Beato. I'm Rhett Scholl. Dave Honorato. So today we're going to be talking about... Guitars everyone Guitars should own. Guitars everyone should own. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was waiting to see if anyone would jump in here. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Since yeah. we were staggering cool. our intro. <laughs> so I'm going to start first here because I'm holding a guitar that I think everyone should know. Not necessarily. This is a, this is a 56 reissue Les Paul gold top uh, with P90s on it. But the P90s are what I think everybody should own a guitar with P90s. Now, two of the guitars here are my guitars, and they both have P90s on them. And as a producer, I always wanted to have a guitar that served a particular function, at least one of them, whether it was a humbucker guitar, a uh, mini humbucker guitar, one with PAFs, a Tele, Maybe a telly that had a, a, a humbucker on it, you know, so you have the full range of that. So that, that was a really important thing for me. But the sound of P90s is, to me, an essential sound of rock music. And they're incredibly versatile. And um, I just, that's, it's just one of my favorite sounding guitars this one in particular and that one too that one plays great this one is this one plays great and sounds great this is too, the best so. playing guitar in the studio yeah a, a lot of people ask me about this guitar because i've played it in a lot of videos i bought that about 15 years ago just a guitar center there was about i don't know 10 of them on the wall i played all of them i picked this one up now if you turn the neck around there's a lot of wear on the neck you can see i've played that guitar a lot and yeah. and uh, that's not relic. That's all real. No, that's deal. real wear. That's, that's that's real wear. Rick Rick wear. And my hands don't really sweat a lot, but I play uh, apparently play in the fourth and fifth position <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot. I don't play many open chords. You, you did, man, because like. I leveled the frets. Yeah, you <laughs> actually hit it out in the middle, so it's a lot of this. It's yeah, lot, you yeah, yeah, don't yeah. touch like, the first to second fret. Yeah, I like E and F major. Yeah, I like you know I like F sharp major. <laughs> okay, what can I say? You know, I like them. It's a great weight too. Yeah, I like different. double cutaway guitars. I mean, both yeah. of these guitars are double cutaway. All three of these yeah. guitars are P90 yeah. guitars. And um, I, I like being able to get up there. Although with the Les Paul, this is something that I was uh, that I talked to you about, yeah. Dave, about yeah. why is it easy for me to get up high on the Les Paul, even though it, do, it sh shouldn't be? Uh, well, because I think the body's a little smaller this way. Is it? So you're, you're, it's a little, you know, cl the only thing that on these that it, it hinders a little bit is the heel. But, you know, um, I, I, I agree, though. I think the body being smaller, and if it's in your lap, it just seems to sit right here. Yeah, I Strat can... does, too. But, you know, the, for a Les Paul guy, I'm, I like Les Paul sitting down. So if they're, you know, Yes. I, 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 I don't know. I just do. I've just had them long enough. And this is basically the same thing. I mean, obviously, they cut out the cutaways here, but... It's the same basic design. You just cover that up, and it's basically a Paul. So. Okay, so Dave, let's go to you. What is your one guitar? Um, if if I had to just pick one, I'd say a, a Tele, straight mm -hmm. up Tele. Um, for for less maybe tonal reasons than what you were saying about the P nineties. Um, just from a reliability standpoint, absolutely, they are bulletproof. If you've got a good one, I mean, I, I've I had one on the road for two years, and I, I literally. I never touched the setup on it. Played it all the time. It fell over. It got wet. It, I mean, everything that could happen to it. And it still, it never gave up. It never stopped working. It always sounded good. And it always tuned perfectly. Why do, why do they... How come tellies never need setups, it seems like? You've hardly ever <laughs> set up my telly. I've used well, my telly need, so much. Well, they need but, setups, but just once you get, get them dialed in, they're such a just brick house of yeah. a guitar. They don't really move. They don't. I mean, you know, you have to do a slight adjustment on the neck for, for humidity and stuff. But, you know, once you really set them, I, they, they just seem to stay... Just simple, man. Yeah, just right. It was a great design. wood yeah. with a neck bolted to I it. I mean, honestly, if you really get down to it, this is just a copy of a tally, if, yeah. if you really put it you know, in basic terms. Um, the Junior and Specials were just a plank wood body, uh, and they were trying to kind of mimic... The, the their own version of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, 
But I'd have to say a tally, though, if, if I had to pick one. And, and really from the tun- tunability. Amazing. Because, I, mean, I, that... I, mean, I mean, dude, I've go, I'll go and pick your tally up in the studio. It'll be the one guitar that's always in town. Mm-hmm. It's the guitar, honestly, that I, if I'm going to do overdubs, if I need any right. parts and I say, okay, I need to do this quick yeah. and it needs to be in tune, that's the first thing I pick up. Because yeah. I know, I mean, I'll like, I'll do rhythm parts with my Gibsons, my PRS, my whatever. Right. But if I want tunability, my telly is, is where and, it's at. And the thing with the telly that I love is it's not a one-trick pony by any means. I mean, if you, mm-hmm. if you, especially if you're doing like a stereo mix and you do two guitars, you can really get a huge sound out of te- two tellies put together on a track. Yeah. I did a video called Do You Gent early on in my channel, and I'm playing a periphery song with a telly, showing you that a telly can play progressive metal also. Yeah. Well, I love it because, like, uh, you know, John Five, perfect example. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He's, he loves them, and, and, I mean, you know, he's... And he, it's great because he he can get everything out of his telly. He's not he's not just one trick pony with his, but extremely heavy on a telly, and it, it's great. It's like yeah, it works. It's, so this is interesting. Dave picked I picked a guitar with a particular pickup. Could be any guitar, but with P90s. Dave talked about a specific guitar, Rhett. Departing from uh, Dave's utilitarian approach and simplicity, I would have to go with a 335. I think. So I, I have a 2010 335, yeah. Memphis mm-hmm. 335, and to me that was always my dream guitar. I think it's it's as versatile as a Tele, but I think it goes about it in a different way. I mean, you can play anything on a 335, and it works. It sounds yeah, great. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. They look amazing. I tend to like larger body guitars too because I'm tall. So from a less Paul, Red's on seven me. feet tall. In case everybody, <laughs> when you see him standing next to me, yeah. Um, so, just I'm just saying he's taller than the stack here. He is. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I think yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, but for me, like a, a Les Paul feels too small for me. I, I, I had a Les Paul. I had a '01 custom. It was wine red, Gold Harbor, a gorgeous guitar. But I never really felt at home. On that guitar. I remember when I saw you playing it, I said, is that a Martin Travel guitar? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, for me, man, I think a 335 is it. They're they're great looking. They're amazing. For me, they're comfortable. They're extremely versatile. Uh, they're not the most stable guitars. You do need to have them set up. You do need to maintain yeah. them. I take mine to Dave, and it's the best it's ever played. Um, but with that being said, and I think I'm going to do a video about this on my channel I think the Telecaster is the greatest guitar of all time ever invented. And it, and it's funny because, I mean, literally, uh, we've owned everything. Yeah. And I always go back to a Tele. And no matter, even when I, I, I mean, I love Gibson stuff. I'm a diehard Gibson guy, man. I mean, if I had my druthers, it would basically be all Gibsons in a Tele. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't know. It, he just got it right. He got it right from the start. He And he, he just... Everything about that guitar, they've never been able to improve it. Yeah. Well, Outside of a bridge design or something, that's it. And when you think about it from a cultural standpoint, like the impact that that guitar has yeah. had on the world. So I was actually at um, Songbirds. I'm actually wearing the shirt. Songbirds Guitar Museum in Chattanooga. Give them a plug. Uh, I played a show there last year, and we got to go back in their vault uh, in the back where they keep all the really nice stuff. And there they have two prototype yeah. Uh, Esquires that Leo built in his garage. Wow! And yep. pine body. I, yeah, and I got to words. hold both of them, and awesome. it was like you're you're ho- literally holding a piece of history. Like without those prototypes, if those didn't exist, I mean, you know, you think about how things could have been different. Because at that time, when he was making those in the late mid to late '40s, rock and roll wasn't a thing. He was building those for country western swing, swing yeah. players. Swing guys. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. And the funny thing is, you you play them, and they kind of suck. Like they're, you could tell they were pretty, he was figuring it out. Like one yeah. of them had a pickup selector on it, but it was a it was a button. It wasn't a switch. It was a button from a lamp that yeah. he had plugged in. They don't play well. They're well. The very, I think, I think those actually that you're talking about don't even have truss rods. Yeah, like, I they're mean, just they, a big log neck with a with a three and three side what they call snake head yeah. headstock, and the push button and all that stuff. I mean, Fender Leo was a diehard tinkerer, right. and you could tell he just used whatever he. Had but you know, he I mean, just cool. nailed it. He did. Man. He nailed it. The the Telecaster, it's the greatest guitar of all time. And I think, like as what I was saying about the reliability, he built that guitar because 
guys who were out on the road and having problems with their guitars, he would be like, if the neck breaks or whatever, I'll just send you another neck. Yeah. yeah. And that's that. And the genius of that alone. He was the just, original you know, boutique builder. He was. He really yeah. was. You know. And he, of course, they were laughing stock for a long time. You know, for the first couple of years, they didn't do well. Yeah. Um, and then they started to catch on. And then obviously Gibson did the Les Paul 52. So everybody started getting on the bandwagon like, oh, hey, this might be a good idea. And then, of course, the Stratton 54. So, yeah. But the Tele, I, I'll go to my grave. I don't think they, I think it's pound for pound, it's the greatest guitar I've ever made. Well, I, with the, all the guitars I have here, it's the only guitar that I have three of. I have three different Tellys. Yeah. I have two Les Pauls, but I have three yeah. different Tellys. And that's, yet I have many other types of guitars, but I chose to have three different Tellys for a reason. Yeah. And, and, and uh, most uh, of the guitars I've built for myself, uh, were, they're all Tellys. Whether they're yeah. bolt on or neck through, it's always a telly design. I, I just, I don't know. There seems like okay. Talk about the body design of a telly, though. What do you like about that? I just think it's the right shape, man. From an aesthetic point of view, it's balanced. The way the headstock design sits against. I'm looking at your your white one over there. In fact, let me just grab it. Yeah, this is uh, this is the one here. How many records has this guitar been on? Oh you my think? god, hundred thousand. How many know. videos has it been? <laughs> been? So many records. Yeah, but the design. I mean, it's so balanced, man. The shape of it, the the way everything's laid out, is one of the best looking guitars I think that's ever yeah. been created. I now I remember this, Dave. You, I had a nick in the back of the neck that you filled. That uh, the, uh, the mm -hmm. there's a chip right of the finish. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I put lacquer down. You yeah, put well, lacquer yeah. down. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. You'd go up a neck and you'd feel it. I, remember, I, 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 yeah. I, I, I it got it knocked fell. over yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. and hit a music stand or something. But it didn't break. It did not break. <laughs> and that no. Not even of course, close. we know if it was a Gibson, you'd be going, "Oh, hey, I got a smiley face crack." <laughs> like, it's like, okay, yeah, all right. And and I like I said, I love Gibson, so I, I owed a ton of them, so I can't, you know. But that guitar. Literally, you could drop that guitar right now, pick it up, and I guarantee it's probably going to be in town. So I, one of my buddies called me the other day. I can't remember who it was. He said, I, I knocked my Gibson off the stand, and, and I said, um, I said, so did the headstock break? He's like, of course it broke. <laughs> I said, did it break off completely? He's like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he dropped it real good. Yeah. yeah he dropped but, it real but good. you know, I mean, pretty much if, yeah. if a Gibson falls over like this, yeah. I'm, how or many times out of ten? It's this way. Is it? It's because it, yeah, it's right here. It's gonna it's gonna break and. It I've seen them fall face down. Yeah, yeah and, 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 and that way too. And they'll they'll either crack right here across like in a round pattern, or they'll go up the side of the neck where the fingerboard is and split that way. Um, I've had ones where the wings were split all the way through the tuners. What are unfixable? Anything? Or are they all fixable? The hardest ones to fix are brakes that are actually straight across okay. that don't have any kind of angle in them. Like so, if it's if it's just literally, it's like sawed off right there. That is the toughest to fix. That doesn't happen very often, though, does it? It's rare, but I've had to fix a few like that. And what I would do is I'd I add splines of wood into the neck, two big splines. And is it because you can't really clamp it because it's the force is going that well, way? Well, yeah, well, you don't have any wood there, and you've got and this is so. Thing on the Gibson, you got to realize that with the truss rod being right here right. and it's so scooped out, you have literally you have this much. I, I wood never thought about that between why. the bottom of uh, this yeah. and the back of that. Wow, you know, and, and I can't tell you how many times I've had to inlay wood pieces because the wood was completely gone. So that never occurred I've, to me until just now. now. I, I have had tellies with busted headstocks, believe it or really? not. Really? Yes, I've had a few, wow. um, but they always split during. They, they go right down the tuner line. So oh, I, you know what? I've crack. seen that. I've seen that. And yeah. That's usually the you know, unless and, somebody purposely smashed it this way and it breaks at the butt end of the neck. But uh, but it's a rare. It's you know, it's so pretty rare. I have a question. Um, what modern guitars, as in guitars that have been designed and released in the last, let's say, 10 to 15 years, that you can get today, readily available, whether it's mass-produced or boutique-built, do you think will be worth and highly sought after uh, 25, 30, 40 years from now? Uh, wow. <laughs> I'll start. I have, yeah. I have one. 
Um, and this is totally not my style of guitar at all, but I've seen some people start to play them. The new Abbasi guitars, the Tosin yes. Abbasi. Yes. I, I, I've yeah. seen a lot of people play it with the fanned frets. Right. Yeah. Those to me are... I went on the website to, actually to look yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, I did because I've been seeing people play them and they look really interesting. Again, they're not it feels my like a new design. Yeah, thing. exactly. It's not my style, but that's the first design of a guitar that I've seen. That's like, okay, now we're taking a step forward yes. in the instrument and the yeah. design and what can. Yeah. Be. and I know that there's you know, uh, like Teufel does a lot of stuff uh, that's very um, like I played a Birdfish uh, in one of my videos mm -hmm. about six months ago, and that's a really cool, interesting design. But it to me that feels just more like a a piece of art whereas this, yeah. the Abbasi stuff that I've seen on videos is like okay this is kind I, of the I next would, I would check out in... I would definitely check out I would I would love to play one of those guitars I looked to see if he had a six string model and they didn't I don't think they had any pictures up he has his eight string up there but, yeah, uh, eight string, yeah. but they just look really interesting the other one it's it's obviously different guitar but um, Klein makes one with the fanned yeah. uh, fingerboard like that and he's been doing that a while uh, but the body is completely different it's a headless design but um, the fan fingerboard is really cool though it's 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 interesting you know you, you play it and you think this shouldn't work yeah. but it does and, and it actually the tuning on it is really really good um, so yeah I'd be interested in to, to and it, it's things. not just for the the extended range I've seen now. John Mayer was playing one on his Instagram a couple of weeks ago and was doing like, just like Charlie Hunter kind of. Well, he was doing. He was actually playing Tosin Abasi's guitar. Yeah, it yeah. was an Abasi yeah. concept guitar. I think it was on. I saw it on Tosin Abasi's Instagram. I thought. Yeah, well, I, I I saw it on Instagram. Yeah, but. It was cool because, you know, obviously those guitars are associated with heavy and progressive music and stuff like that. But then you've got a, you know, pop blues guy like Mayer playing one and he's doing like some Charlie Hunter walking bass yeah. comping yeah. chords on right. top of it. It sounded awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know? I saw that. I'd say, um, boy, it's a tough one though as far as new guitar, to, to nail one, one down that I think is going to really go up in value because... Being a vintage guy, you know, years ago, these all of these old guitars were never revered mm -hmm, until right. somebody figured out, hey, that's a really good sounding guitar. You know, that's really cool, or it looks cool. So the more, it, you know, it's it's tough to pick. I mean, um, I mean, I can see the Sir guitars being ones that that, sure. that are really sought after yeah. and, I mean, and will go way up in value. I think so. Yeah, Anderson. Um, yeah, I think Sir. it's going to be centered around builders. Yeah, like yeah. specific builders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I'm a big Novo guy, and that's Dennis Fano who builds those. And yep. and Fano had Fano guitars before he had Novo. And I've noticed now that you can't find even ten years old. You can't find a Fano built Fano. Right. Back for, and, and when people are selling them, they're selling them for thousands of dollars more than they were because of the guy who built them. Right. And I think I think we'll see that, especially with the um, kind of the explosion in the boutique world in the last decade or so. That, you know, everybody's building pedals and amps and guitars and stuff now. But I think there are people out there that are doing it better and and on a different level than others and those people i think will gather some recognition and their stuff will be highly sought after for i think years. yeah it comes to, it, quality is always the number one thing that draws me to something if i know something's really well built and put together uh even if i'm not a fan of the design mm -hmm. you know i'll still respect you know the quality that went into it and and they're always going to hold up so you can you know um you're not saying that cheap guitars aren't fun because they're great too and they have their own place. So, um, in fact, I mean, some of my favorite new guitars are, are like some of the Eastwood stuff. Yeah. And um, the uh, Hallmark uh, uh, Moserite copies and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know, they're like cool, cheap rides for 500 to $800. You know, and they're like big lighters. If the net goes bad in, in five years, I'm not going to cry about it. I'll be like, yeah, go ahead, get something else. You know, I mean, so. Um, the Dan Electro stuff that you yeah. use yes, all the time, which those I love. are great. I, I love those guitars; they play amazing, and they're you know. The, but that's a guitar that's been around for yeah fifty years, right? That's a design <laughs> that's basically a copy of this, but right. just made out of cardboard, right? <laughs> you know, Masonite. So yeah, um, but yeah, I'd have to say you know, and with any of the, the stuff, quality stuff is always going to bring good money, and I think there'll always be people desiring it. If there's low numbers, they're high quality. And they have a really great tone. Those are the three factors that always push something to, you know, 
collector status. So, so we want to get your opinion. Leave it yeah. in the comments. Let us know what you guys think. Are you guys and girls? What you guys think about uh, what guitars are going to be around in 50 years? Going to be worth something? Things with with current builders and what your guitar of choice is and why. That's all for now. Please subscribe here. Give a thumbs up. You can go to Rhett's channel, which is youtube.com slash Rhett Scholl. Dave Honorado, Dojo Guitar Repair on Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> <laughs>